Okay, welcome everybody to the Comfort Secure in Veeam webinar today about Office 365 and knowing if your data is truly backed up. We're happy to have everybody. I can tell this is a popular topic. I know it has been for some time, um, but I'm surprised at how many people we have on the line today. So I'm looking forward to talking to everybody about Office 365 and how we can help you protect your data. I know that you probably have some questions in mind already, and there are probably going to be some that come up as we go. So please feel free to use the questions box during the webinar um, or at the end. We're going to do a live Q&A with the engineers so that any questions you have, we can make sure we get those answered. I want to introduce our two main speakers today. We have Brandon McCoy, systems engineer from Beam Software, and Eric Young, Comport Secure's Principal Cloud Architect. These two are going to take us through the details of Office 365 today, show you some uh, demo environments and show you what's included and what's not included and how we can remedy the gap to fully protect your data. Before I hand the mic over to Brandon and Eric, I just want to give everybody the overview of exactly why we're here today and how we're gonna run through this. It's gonna take about 30 to 40 minutes. And like I said, please um, put all your questions in the questions box. So at the end, we can do the live q and I am Hannah Coney from Comfort Secure, once again, Business Development Manager. And today, we are looking forward to talking about the real problem that many people aren't necessarily aware of. The difference between where Microsoft Office 365 draws the line of responsibility and where the customer or you um, take over that responsibility. It is very easy to assume that because your data is in the cloud, it's completely safe and whatever you need, whenever you need it, it'll be there. Um, it's a little bit different with Office 365 as it is with a lot of other software and service providers. It doesn't necessarily mean that just because it was there at one point in time, it'll be there when you go back for it later. So we're gonna focus uh, very much so today on that line of responsibility and what you can do to help make sure that that data is where you need it when you need it. Before we jump into the Office 365 backup specific information, I wanna introduce Comport Secure to everybody on the line. Some of you may be familiar with Comport Technology Solutions, a leader in IT infrastructure for 30 years. Now, Comport has excelled tremendously in the services that we offer, but really the main areas in which are applicable to talk about today is our service pillars. Comport secures four service pillars really truly encompass the full solution provider that we are, and they've allowed us to focus and dig deeper in our professional services, our backup and VR as a service, infrastructure as a service, and managed services. These four pillars um, really encompass how we can help our customers manage that IT um, road, as we say, the journey to really helping you um, optimize your entire environment. So IT is not just on-prem anymore, it's now merging into the cloud and those hybrid environments, and we want to help with that. So these four pillars truly help us do that with you. Our professional services pillars that you will see on the left-hand side is anything from a local assessment, if you aren't sure where you stand with the benchmarks in today's um, IT um, standards, we can help you identify those where there might be some shortcomings and where we can help. And then it really extends all the way through your infrastructure today, from your network to your servers, and then all the way to getting your, that data ready to send offsite to the cloud. So we can do a full um, deep dive into that local environment to help figure out exactly where you're at and where we can help you improve. And then we move into the backup as a service and DR as a service. We feel that although the cloud might not be for everybody, definitely parts of it can help you perform better and can help you be better prepared to recover that data and have access to it when you need it. So whether it's taking mission critical machines and getting them off site and to improve RPO and RTO, we can do that or if it's as simple as just sending a redundant backup off-site from your DR colo site that might be five miles down the road, we can do that too. Third, infrastructure as a service. This is a hot topic right now, mostly because it's public cloud. 
um, but Comfort and Comfort Secure is, has worked very hard to bring a robust private cloud in our data centers to customers and from a hosting aspect or if you have hardware that you would like to send to us to use in the data center, that's fine too. And then blending that with public cloud options or one or the other, depending on what your needs are. Then lastly, managed services. And this is where the Office 365 has really fallen, fallen lately because it's such a hot topic of how do I make that transition from my exchange environment to Office 365? Well, it seems like a very large undertaking. We're not really ready for it. And that's something that we can help relieve from you. We are a Microsoft Cloud Service Provider. So not only can we help you with what we're going to talk about today with backing up that Office 365 data, we can also help with the migration from your exchange over to that environment. So everything from the management of public cloud, private cloud, um, your data center, you need help managing that as well as backup as a service and DR as a service in the cloud. So. The four areas in which Comport Secure excels, as I just mentioned previously, in that third and um, second and third panel of those four pillars is really backup as a service, DR as a service, infrastructure as a service, and managed services. So those last three there, that's Comport Secure. And Comfort Secure's niche is the cloud. We're here to help bridge that gap from your traditional infrastructure inside the four walls of your building to helping you get data off-site to a secure location while still meeting those compliances that we know are required from a legal healthcare um, or archiving perspective. Whatever it is that it is you need to meet to be safe and secure in the cloud, our data centers can help you with. So I'm going to run through these four really quickly, not in too much detail, but just to make sure that everybody completely understands the, the fullness that we can provide when it comes to these four. Backup as a service, as I mentioned a few moments ago, short-term or long-term retention. And there's a wide range of varieties there, whether it be a quick a restores for longer RPOs and RTOs that you don't necessarily need to help with that. And then it gives you that flexibility to restore to your local site whenever that might be that you need it without feeling like you're going to incur additional cost to do so. The second item there, disaster recovery as a service. When backup as a service just isn't really enough or you have a co-location, but it's really not far enough away, you're kind of struggling with, uh, well, it checks that box, but it might not be the best way to check that box. This is a great way to make sure that the mission critical data is available. It's one thing to back it up and it's one thing to have it sitting somewhere, but it's another thing to have to recover that data and know that you can get to that data when you need it to continue to run your company's core um, niche business, what it is that you're here to do. As IT professionals, no one wants to sit around and wonder why your DR site won't come up and then to have board members breathing down your back. So that's a part that we can truly help you with when it comes to making sure that that data is readily available when you need it, we can help you with that. Third, infrastructure as a service. It's expensive. It's really expensive to have a co-location, to manage that co-location, to manage all of the resources, um, not just money, but time, to make sure that you're testing, to make sure that the providers that you have for redundancy are performing, and to manage every little piece of that DR site. So it's very popular now, and I'm sure everyone's heard of the public cloud, um, but private cloud is there to help make sure that if you're looking to do a hardware refresh or you're looking to make a change to your co-location, uh, that there's options for you. We can help you look to see what makes sense to take off site, put in our data center, and have a private cloud um, for those machines so that you don't necessarily have to keep doing a hardware refresh. You don't have to keep making sure your resources are allocated and that everything would run smoothly in the event of a disaster. So infrastructure as a service with Comfort Secure can alleviate that and also alleviate a lot of the CapEx costs that come with that. And then lastly, managed services. Like I mentioned, very costly and very resource heavy to continue to manage the infrastructure or the backups or the disaster recovery solution in place. So Comfort Secure has a managed services offering so that if you have Veeam backing up on site and you're really not 
we don't have the bandwidth to make sure that those backups are going to the cloud or your replication jobs are completing and that the data is actually going where you desire it to, we can help you with that as well. So those are just four of the places in which Comport Secure can really fill those cloud niches that everybody seems to be talking about more and more today. We've partnered with Veeam. Veeam has been a phenomenal partner to Comport and Comport Secure. And all of our services can be powered and are powered by Veeam software. So whether it's on-premise infrastructure as a service or it's backup as a service and DR as a service to the cloud, uh, Veeam is there and it's because they really do a tremendous job the software uh, for the intelligent data management that they've continued to improve on is every day it's proving to just work as they like to say so brandon i'm going to let you take it from here if you want to talk about Veeam. absolutely thanks so much and welcome everyone uh, so yes again i'm brandon mccoy i'm a cloud engineer here at veeam I'm located in atlanta georgia and uh, we wanted to show this slide to really you know showcase some of Veeam's strengths and one of those uh, is at the bottom right the net promoter score uh, 73 that's double the leading uh, industry average, and it's uh, on a score from negative 100 to positive 100, so it's pretty high up there. Uh, we, we have a lot of satisfied customers, partners, resellers that we work with. Uh, and you can see here some of the other stats, uh, you know, 75% of those are Fortune 500 customers um, and the 4,000 new customers per month. Um, you know, Veeam is a, a rapidly growing company and we continue to bring on, uh, you know, more and more customers and more and more protected uh, virtual machines. And here, uh, so, you know, we kind of touched on this a moment ago when Hannah was talking about the uh, intelligent data management, and that's kind of where we are with our messaging today. Uh, we don't want to be seen as merely a backup and recovery tool, but more of also a data migration tool, right? So it's any app, any cloud, any data. Uh, having that data at your fingertips, being able to uh, seamlessly move those in and out of the cloud, right? So whether it's a cloud native app like uh, Office 365, or you have some on-prem applications like SQL, we want to be able to help you move those in and out of your on-prem location. Uh, maybe to a managed service uh, infrastructure as a service or just have a secondary site to back that up and we can do all of that and more and we do it with Comport today. With Office 365, as it's highlighted there, it says that it's your own data. You own it. You control it, right? And that is uh, straight from the Microsoft website. So a lot of times we have customers who assume that since all their data is in the cloud, that you know it's all being backed up and protected. Well, really, we have the shared uh, uh, model of trust, right? Where it's uh, your responsibility is your data, and they're just going to give you the infrastructure. You know, they can if they have some you know massive outage, they're able to move their services to another uh, data center. Um, but, you know, the actual email data that, that is there is, is up to you to control. This, uh, the Veeam, Veeam backup for Office 365 right now are on uh, version 1.5. Coming soon will be 2.0 in the next few weeks, and that will have SharePoint and OneDrive support as well. Currently, it is just Exchange. Um, we have the ability to back up all those mailbox items um, either at Comport's data center or if you wanted to back it up to your own location, you could. Uh, easy resource with our Veeam Explorer for Exchange. We're able to restore individual emails directly back to that user's mailbox. Uh, of course, we can do PST exports. And we can keep the data as long as we need. There's also this e-discovery function. So if maybe you have an email that was deleted but you can't remember exactly you know, who sent it or uh, what the subject of the email was, you can find some other values there to search uh, for that email. So the retention policy here are what Microsoft retention policy is, right? So you can see that uh, inbox or uh, folder data, so this is just your everyday emails that are just sitting in your inbox, haven't been moved out. Um, they are kept there for quite a while, and then they're eventually moved to archive. Um, but you also have to think that any user who's using Office 365 can go in and delete their emails and then permanently delete those emails. Um, there's also the chance of uh, uh, ransomware, which we'll talk about later. So, um, But then if you look at deleted items, so those get moved out like after 30 days. They're permanently deleted. Um, junk mails are even permanently deleted sooner than that. And if someone leaves the company and is removed from the Office 365 account, those emails and all of that data is permanently deleted after a month, which we've had a lot of horror stories where a CEO left the company, um, you know, and when they had to go back to that the user's account, 
all their emails were gone. So, you know, with the Veeam product and with Comport's help, you can back up that data, keep it as long as you need. You know, if, whether you need to PST export a user's account when they leave the company or whether you just need to hold on to emails for, you know, X amount of years, uh, we, we leave that up to you. So this is the retention policy with Veeam, right? It's all green. Um, so however long you want to back those mailbox items up for, that's how long they'll be kept. It's completely up to you. So you may have uh, some regular employees who only need their mailboxes backed up, you know, once a day, kept for a year. You may have some, you know, CEO or some C-level mailboxes that need to be backed up two, three times a day. And that data may need to be kept forever. As long as you have the storage space for it, uh, we can keep the data for as long as you need. Okay. So how it works. So Veeam Backup for Office 365 is an archive tool. So we're going to take a full image of the mailbox data at the time of the backup, and then just you know any new emails that get added will be backed up the next time you go to, to run that job, right? Um, so if any emails are deleted or if a user is removed, it, that does not affect how the data is kept, right? So we'll keep the, the backed up mailbox items as long as you specify, regardless of what happens to the actual production mailboxes. And then you see here the Veeam Explorer. So the Veeam Explorer gives you the ability to do your own resource. The really cool thing about Comport is they have this product installed to handle multi-tenants. So they can add you in. They can back up all your mailboxes to their data center because, you know, kind of the whole point of Office 365 is you have that data off-site anyway. So if you, you know, you don't really want to have to back it up and now that data is back at your location. So you can have Comport back this up for you. They can keep it secure at their data center, but still give you uh, the ability to do your own restores of individual emails, um, search for items, and export those as a PST. So this slide also demonstrates, if we look at the upper part of there where it says MS Office 365 organizations, that's where your Office 365 mail will be kept up in Office 365. And then the lower left where it says uh, Veeam Backup for Office 365, this is a local install. This would be in a, uh, a local company. So you would have your own repositories, you'd have your own uh, proxy servers, and you'd use that Veeam Explorer to access those. So if we go to the next slide, the next slide is actually the differences between the service provider backup and your local backup. So we take all that hardware, those proxy servers that uh, Veeam backup for Office 365 and those repositories and it is on our infrastructure. You would use the Veeam Explorer on your infrastructure to connect through the internet through a secure uh, connection and be able to do all the restores, whether you're sending, you know, restoring the email as an attachment, exporting them as a PST, or actually even restoring it back to the uh, email box. So we can do a, a quick demo. So this is the uh, Explorer for, not the Explorer, this is the uh, backup for Microsoft Office 365. It's relatively simple to set up. If you're installing this locally, you just run the installer and set it up. And then you go into your organizations and add an organization. You would do a Microsoft Office 365. Uh, you would choose your region, which is a default in my case. And you'd enter in a, a uh, email that's got the uh, admin rights to your Office 365 and a password. Once you did that, you'd show up as a, your, your own organization here, and you create a backup job, and that is relatively simple as well. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and edit this one since it's already created, and you would give it a name and put a description in there. Uh, th in this particular case, we're going to back up all of the email boxes, and uh, we're not going to exclude any. We're going to select what proxy and what uh, repository we want to do, and basically hit next. And now we can do uh, basically when we want to run this daily. So I'm running this daily at 6 p.m. every day. Um, a couple of different things in here, retry filled email boxes, you know, uh, so that way we don't have any other failures. And click save, and it's essentially done. So now it's going to run tonight at 6 p.m. Now, if you're going to use Comport Secure as your uh, repository for your email, this is something that I would go through with uh, your administrator. We'd go through and you'd enter in the password and stuff, so that way this would... Uh, back up to our infrastructure. Uh, another key here is when it comes time for your repositories, if you're doing this locally, uh, the repositories are where you set up how long you want to keep your retention for. So if you have, you want to keep it for seven years, you would, this is where you would adjust it for. So in the Comfort Secure, I have multiple repositories, depending on if you want to keep it for a year or three years or seven years, uh, I can handle that for you. 
Now, as far as accessing your email and bringing that stuff back up, we have something called the Explorer for Exchange or Exchange Explorer. And it's quite simple to do. You, uh, you pop it up and run it. In our case, if you're connecting to a service provider, you would right click this and say, add Veeam, uh, backup from Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Office 365 service provider, put in your provider, your username and your account, and you would get this. You'd have all your emails. Now the cool thing about this is, now I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna delete one of my boss's emails. Sorry, Matt. If I wanted to restore it, I could just right click and restore back to my account. And that's what we're gonna do. This should pop up in momentarily. It is gonna ask me for an account that has access to email. and success. So if we go back to my email, it should be popping up here any minute. And there it is. <laughs> Essentially how it works, it's, uh, it's relatively easy in a nutshell. Uh, the main choices are between uh, whether or not you want to store your data locally on your own site or whether you want to store it into a Comport Secure up into the cloud where it's uh, away from your primary production center. So if anything happens to your primary data center, you still have your data. So the, the, there's a hidden bunch of hidden pitfalls. So what you want to do is take control of your data. So when events happen that are out of your control, your data is where you need, want it and when you need it. You get a longer retention plan with Veeam Office 365 backup to protect against lost and corrupt data. So as a, re, as a robust and highly capable software as a service platform, Microsoft Office 365 is, and fits the needs of many organizations perfectly, Office 365 only pretty much provides application availability and uptime to ensure your users never skip a beat. But an Office 365 backup solution can protect you against many other common use cases. By talking to hundreds of IT professionals across the globe who have migrated to Office 365, there have been six pitfalls. So we have accidental deletion, uh, retention policy gaps and confusion, internal security threats, external security threats, and then legal and compliance requirements and managing the hybrid email uh, deployments and migrations to Office 365. So within that, you know, there's a big misunderstanding about Microsoft's perceived responsibility to use actual data, uh, actual responsibility for protection and long-term retention of their Office 365 data. The backup and recoverability of that Microsoft provides and what users assume they're getting is often different. What that means is essentially aside from the standard precautions that Office 365 has in place, you may need to recess the level of control you have over your data and how much access you truly have to it. So the big thing is, right, so where the confusion comes in, Microsoft Office 365 offers something called geo-redundancy, which is often mistaken for backup. So backup is actually when you take a historical copy of your data and store it in several locations. That way, if it's lost or accidentally deleted or maliciously attacked, for example, there will be easy accessible copy elsewhere. Geo-redundancy, which Microsoft does, on the other hand, protects against site or hardware failure. So if there's some type of infrastructure crash or outage, you will remain always on and oblivious to any underlying issues that they have. What geo-redundancy can't protect you against is every type of data loss. For example, if you delete a user, whether you mean to or not, or the, the data, the deletion is then replicated across the network. The native recycle bins and version histories included in Office 365 can only protect you against data loss in limited ways which in turn, you know, a simple recovery can become a big problem after Office 365 you redundantly deletes all the data forever. That's uh, what uh, Brandon was talking about as far as, uh, you know, the CEO leaving and they get deleted from uh, their Office 365 account, it's gone, it's gone forever. So there's two types of what, deletions in the Office 365. There's a soft delete and hard delete. An example of a soft delete is when you empty your deleted items folder. It is often referred to as a permanent delete, but in this case, you know, permanent is not really permanent as the item can still be found in the recoverable items mailbox. A hard delete is when the item is tagged for, uh, tagged can be purged from that mailbox database completely. Once that happens, it's unrecoverable, period. So the other pitfalls, you know, we have the fast pace of business in the digital age, right? Continually evolving policies, including retention policies that are difficult to keep up with, let alone manage. Uh, just like the hard and soft delete, Office 365 has limited backup or retention policies. It can only send off 
situational data loss and it's not intended to be an all encompassing backup solution. You know, example, we just talked about the, uh, you know, the employee leaving. Microsoft only will keep that data for 90 days after you delete them. So, uh, you know, you could be in for uh, a big, big problem if you delete it and you have retention policies and you delete it by accident. So the other idea of security threat that brings to mind are hackers and viruses, right? Uh, everybody thinks that, um, you know, Microsoft Office 365 is hacker and virus, uh, you know, we got that shield up, you can't, can't uh, hack it, you can't uh, put a virus on it, but uh, we know that to be different. And in fact, we'll show you a video here shortly uh, that'll show you a little bit differently on that. So malware and viruses like ransomware, they do serious damage to organizations globally, and it can hit Office 365. So reputation damage control, you know, after this breach happens is, is not easy. The external threats can sneak in through emails and attachments. I mean, there's only so much that firewalls can do. Uh, you know, personnel need to be trained, but you have to have a, a backup in case those do fail. You know, this is a five-minute video that where we kind of, you know, spoiler alerted, uh, got got to the end here to summarize. So basically, well, there is a guy uh, has a website, um, and he he kind of used to be a hacker, and now he helps, uh, you know, the government agencies, you know, um, fend off hackers and, and find, you know. Um, uh, vulnerabilities in your systems. And so what he's showing here is a ransomware strain that I believe he created and he pushed it to a um, to his Office 365 mailbox. Somebody clicked on it. It's that one at the top that says anti-spam pro. Uh, once that was clicked, you can see here uh, all these files became infected. So um, it's just important to remember that even if you're not deleting emails, you're not worried about you know um, keeping emails for a certain amount of time, your email uh, box can still be hacked. This is a pretty new ransomware strain, and there's going to be more created, you know, each and every day. So it's good to have a backup copy of that, um, so that way you don't have to pay a bunch of money to have all your emails unencrypted. So we wanted to wrap up with Comfort Secure's recommended best practices for Office 365. There aren't really best practices out there for Office 365. However, there's always ways in which you can protect yourself, protect your data, and protect your organization. So we wanted to point out five of the easiest ways in which you can do that as you're migrating off your exchange to Office 365 and starting to back up that Office 365 environment. The first one is multi-factor authentication. Uh, it's amazing um, how simple it might seem that that's just something that you would do. Uh, however, there's an, I can tell you there are more companies that don't um, that that don't then do use multi-factor authentication. So that's the first step in which you can do to safeguard against some of those viruses and those threats, um, even internal threats that Eric was alluding to. And the second best practice is to configure your data loss prevention within um, Microsoft. Microsoft does give you some great ways to help uh, you know when your retention is on site to be able to use the tools in which they've built in. So it's if you can use those, then that's going to help you and it's going to get you started. It's not going to protect you um, as far as your backups go or taking that data and archiving it, but it will give you some more control of your Windows environment. The third best practice is to ensure that those backups are pointing to a secure data center. And this one is the key one here. This really truly um, should hit home with anybody who has said, oh, it's fine. Um, we run backups every night and we've run replicas to our colo and then gotten to the point where they needed to rely on them and they weren't available. This point right here is telling you that just because you're backing them up on site um, to your backup targets or your colo site, it might not be enough. So it's a good time to look at using a service provider to back those Office 365 mailboxes up to a secure data center in the cloud. And then the fourth point, establish your retention policies and publish them within the company. Those retention policies that Brandon and Eric showed us that you have control of in Beam, they're very important to understand because once that um, the policy has expired or that email is gone, you're not going to get that email back. So once you have established those retention policies, and they might be different for every organization, publishing them within the company is very important so that those employees know when that data will no longer be available. And then the very last one, no one understand the SLA of Microsoft Office 365. I was listening to a podcast the other day and it's very, it's a different 
thought that goes through the mind when you are agreeing to the terms and service of a large um, online provider. You know, we all go online and it's like my Spotify account. I just, yep, 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 change T's and C's. Okay, got it. Yep, get it out of my face. I don't want to be annoyed by the box anymore. So it's really easy to just breeze through those. Um, but this is your data. This is your company's data. This is the data that helps run the organization and it allows for the communication of that company to remain intact. So understanding those SLAs will allow you to know where that line of responsibility is, and it'll give you a very clear definition of that, and then it will allow you to take that responsibility that you have as the IT director, as the CIO, as the CEO in your organization, and it will allow you to make the decisions that could impact what happens in the future. It could be the difference between a company surviving a disaster and not. So those are our five recommendations. Uh, we do have questions that I want to get addressed here. If anybody has any that we didn't get answered during the presentation, please feel free to throw them in the questions box. I'm going to pull up the most popular ones, and then we should be able to breeze through those. Um, Eric, Brandon, anything that you wanted to address? Uh, not off the top. Tom, I'm sure some of these questions will open up conversation. So the first question is, where is the customer re repository? Where can the repositories be? So I think this person would like to know, uh, what are the options of the targets to point those backups from your office? I'll, I'll take this one. Too. So your, repo your repositories can be anywhere, basically anywhere that you want them. So if you're going to do your own backups, if you're going to back up Office 365 yourself, it would be pretty much in your own data center or, you know, to a branch office or something like that. If you're backing up to us, which is Comport Secure, then your backups, your email backups would be in our data center. So we have one up in New York and we have one that's going into Las Vegas. So that's where your data would be for a service provider. Great. Thanks, Eric. Second question is, does this integrate with the Beam backup and replication? Can I use Theme Office 365 to back up to an existing repos and tape backups. I'll grab that one. So, uh, no, it doesn't necessarily integrate today. Um, the Office 365 is a standalone product. Uh, you can still use the same Explorer for Exchange to do those restores, um, but it is a separate product, and it also cannot be backed up to a, a Veeam repository. It needs to be to its own uh, kind of dedicated uh, storage there. Okay, but I think the key there that you said was you could still use the Explorer? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, third question, when calculating spaces are an easy way to determine how much storage you will need to have for various retention periods? Yeah, so I, I'll take that one too. Uh, unfortunately not. <clears throat> That's a question we get asked quite a bit. We have a lot of tools that will help you if you're going to be backing this stuff up yourself as far as uh, how many proxies. Um, there really isn't a, a way to calculate that kind of data um, other than to kind of get a hand on how much, you know, how much data is that first backup and then some, some daily change rate estimations. Um, I would say that if you are doing this yourself with your own repository, um, that you may want to make those repositories VMs. That way you can, you know, change them on the fly as needed. Uh, or, you know, just go through Comport and allow them to take care of that for you. Uh, the sizing there can be a little tricky. Thanks, Brandon. Um, then last question, uh, is the Veeam software a subscription or standalone software? I believe that this person is inquiring about the Office 365. However, maybe this is a good point and time to talk about backup and replication um, subscriptions. So I want to answer this one for you, John. The Veeam Office 365 is a separate standalone um, agent, as Brandon alluded to. Um, however, it is subscription-based through cloud service provider. So if you're looking for an OpEx uh, way to use Office 365 and Office 365 backup, both are available as a subscription-based solution. Up and then one more. Are there differences and limitations in what is backed up as it relates to Office 365 online versus the desktop client version? 
Yeah, I'll, I'll grab that. So um, as far as the Office 365 versus like an on-prem, uh, there is some, some differences, at least for now. Um, so right now it's only Exchange, but it's anything in Exchange, right? So anything in your Exchange database can be backed up and recovered seamlessly. Uh, the on-prem version, you know, so your standard Veeam backup and replication, that has the ability to back up and recover SharePoint and OneDrive. Um, but that functionality will be in the next release of the Office 365 product, which should be coming in the next few weeks. Awesome. Thanks, Brandon. So that'll do it for the questions for now. If there are more, feel free, as you think of them, to reach out to Comport. Um, we've got our email address here that I'll leave up if you would like to start a free trial. Please feel free to reach out to us and let us know whether it be the standalone Office 365 backup tool with Beam or using that to send the backups to the cloud as well. We can assist with both of those. So please feel free to reach out to us. If there's more questions, throw them in the questions box and we will get back to you with an answer. I will email you over a response today. Thank you everybody for attending and we will talk to you soon.